The Simpsons are currently the longest running scripted primetime TV show right above Law & Order SVU. With 33 seasons and counting under its belt, we've met plenty of fun and recognizable characters. But that made us think about the newest big thing on this channel, of course, Squid Game. So, I'm Caleb with Wicked Binge and this is which Simpsons character would survive Squid Game. So the rules are the same as always, but only one really matters for this list. Every character comes into the games with no weapons, items, or powers to equalize the playing field. However, we sadly have to exclude everyone's favorite side character famous for his groin hitting exploits, Hans Moleman. This is because Moleman seems to be immortal, which means he's not eligible for this list. With rules out of the way, our cast list for this event includes Homer Simpson, Marge Simpson, Bart Simpson, Lisa Simpson, Abraham Grandpa Simpson, Herbert Powell, Ned Flanders, Lenny Leonard, Carl Carlson, Moe Sislak, Krusty the Clown, Chief Clancy Wiggum, Principal Seymour Skinner, Miss Edna Krabappel, Mr. Montgomery Burns, Waylon Smithers, Barney Gumbel, Professor John Frank, Lindsay Nagel, Nelson Muntz, Artie Ziff, Rex Banner, Frank Grimes, Sideshow Bob, Fat Tony, Russ Cargill, Hank Scorpio, Herman Herman, Snake Jailbird, and Millhouse. Our rules and players are in place, so now we get into our first game of the series, and that is Red Light Green Light. The way to win Red Light Green Light is simple enough because you only need two things to survive. Firstly, you'll need a level enough head to stay still when shots start ringing out, and secondly, you need to be a good listener. If you're not a good listener, you won't survive any of the games, but this one especially. Some standout survivors of this game include Marge Simpson, who not only is a level-headed person, but due to her motherly nature is a very good listener. Ned Flanders is another generally level-headed person, save for immediately after Maude's death, and he's an amazing listener. Seymour Skinner is ex-military and has amazing listening skills, as well as being a generally level-headed person like Marge and Ned. Finally, Wayland Smithers, who due to his employment as Burns' aide, is a level-headed person when not around Burns and is one of the better listeners in the series. The first to go is none other than Homer Simpson himself. Don't! Homer is not at all well built for this game. This is due to his intense anger issues that make it hard for him to stay level-headed, especially in situations like this. Secondly, he's not that great of a listener. More than one episode has him do the exact opposite of what people ask of him. I'm a great dad. So it's no surprise he dies during a game like Red Light Green Light. His father, Abraham Simpson, is next to fall during this game. Abe is old, there's no doubt about that, and that gets in the way of his survival. Abe's advanced age causes him to be kind of out of it most of the time, being kind of kooky and not level-headed. This man's more of a son to me than you've ever been! What did- Secondly, one episode confirms he needs hearing aids and he constantly has issues listening to other people. Combining these two facts make it a no-brainer that he would die during this game. Everyone's favorite bartender, Mo Sislak, is the next to go. While Mo has average to above average listening skills due to his job as a bartender, Mo really falls short in level-headedness. His anger issues are second only to Homer. Every time Bart pulls a relatively harmless prank on him, he threatens to kill him in crude and gruesome ways. And I'm gonna carve my name on your back with an ice pick. This really pulls him down into the depths of this game, causing his death at this time. Finally, the last to fall during this game is Herman Herman. Herman is the one-armed crazy gun store owner and the fan of the Confederacy if the flag he has is any indication. Herman fails in this game due to the fact he is quite insane or at the very least not all there. In 22 short films about Springfield, he kidnaps Chief Wiggum and Snake and pretty much tortures them. He does have average listening skills or at the very least seems to. But he lacks a level head like when he was committing crimes in the garage of a police officer's home. With 26 of our original 30s still kicking around, we move on to the next game on our list, that being the Honeycombs. To survive the Honeycombs, you need to be able to take the shape out of the cookie without breaking the shape. 
Those are a steady hand as to be able to remove the shape and the patience necessary to slowly but surely evacuate the cookie shape. Some contestants who have a steady hand and are patient enough to take the cookie from its holding include the following. Marge Simpson making another appearance due to her shocking patience and the fact she seems to be one of the very few steady-handed characters in the show. Lisa Simpson is a skilled saxophone player with average patience. Herb Powell has the steady hands of an inventor and the patience of a saint. Professor Fink is very similar due to his inventor status. He has a naturally steady hand and his patience is just as great if not greater than Marge's. Lindsay Nagel is skilled in the use of firearms and bows, showing her steady hand. And Sideshow Bob is not only one of the most patient characters in this show, but is a skilled surgeon as shown on many accounts. The first to go during this game is Bart Simpson. Bart lacks patience. Honestly, throughout the series, he is one of the most impatient characters, except for when he is waiting for one of his pranks to work. There are occasions where Bart shows patience, but most often he doesn't. Even his skills in pranking aren't very useful because, as you know, cheating gets you eliminated. Next to be eliminated is Chief Wiggum. This is due to a couple of factors and comes down mostly to the fact that he's kind of impatient, has big hands that wouldn't be very helpful for extracting the shape, and he's kind of a pig. He might just eat the cookie instead. Now, these by themselves are not enough to get him eliminated, but altogether, Wiggum is dropped pretty quickly. The next to go is none other than Milhouse. Milhouse is clumsy, there's no doubt about that. Sure, he's not shaky, but his bad luck and clumsiness cause him a lot of problems. He can be very patient at times, which doesn't help his case, and he doesn't have a steady hand most of the time. So today, nothing's coming up Milhouse. The final character to die during this game is Nelson Muntz. Nelson is a bully and not that bright. This is due to a crazy home life and an absentee father. However, that doesn't change the fact that Nelson is impatient 99% of the time and has pretty big hands which makes it hard for him to do this challenge. Nelson fails because he tends to use his brawn and not his brain, which makes him a very strong candidate for failure. <laughs> With the honeycombs evacuated and only 22 of our original 30 in play, we move to the next game, The Midnight Brawl. The Midnight Brawl, while not an official game, is one of the most important moments in the series. This is due to the fact that a large portion of players get picked off if they don't have what it takes to survive. The three ways one survives in this game are the following. The hand-to-hand -hand combat skills to survive in a group combat, the stealth skills necessary to hide, preferably in plain sight, or the intelligence necessary to win through other tactics. Contestants who have all the necessary skills for survival include Marge Simpson gets the third mention in surviving sections not only does she have above average intelligence for Springfield, but she's also a skilled mixed martial artist, which helps her in this game. Seymour Skinner has military training and is above average intelligence, which makes him a highly pertinent threat. Okay, who wants a piece of me? Mr. Burns is highly stealthy and amazingly intelligent. Sideshow Bob is extremely intelligent and one of the stealthiest characters in the show. And finally, Hank Scorpio is a highly intelligent and an above average combatant, making him a shoo in. The first character to die in this game is Lenny Leonard. Lenny is a good friend and co worker of Homer, and the reason he dies in a game like this is simple. He is average across the board. In a game like this, being average across the board is not a good thing. He doesn't excel in any category, which causes him to die in this game. The next character to fall in this game is Krusty the Clown. Krusty is of average intelligence and can be quite the funny guy at times, but he falls for two main reasons. The first reason is that while he's of average intelligence, he's not a combatant which makes him hard pressed to survive. His shocking white face paint and his large body make him not the greatest at stealth either, meaning he has no way to survive this game and he dies. The corrupt chief Rex Banner is the last character to fall during this game. 
Rex Banner, despite being a relatively recognizable villain, kind of fails in a lot of the important categories. He is only average in stealth skills as he doesn't seem bad nor good when it comes to stealth. He is also kind of incompetent, not more so than Wiggum, but more so than you would think and he's also slightly corrupt. He can then only rely on fighting skills that he doesn't seem to have as he doesn't fight anyone during the episode, so Banner dies during this game. Very few people die during the Midnight Brawl, leaving us with 19 of our original 30 as we head into Tug of War. Tug of War is a game that requires two skills if you wish to survive it. Those two skills are the strength necessary to pull the rope and cause the others to fail, and the teamwork to pull the rope in tandem and kill the other team. Some strong players or contestants that work well in a team include Marge Simpson gets another mention due to being one of the most likely characters in the series to work on a team, Ned Flanders who has above average strength, just look at him, and he's always happy to work in a team, and Barney Gumble has above average strength even while drunk and is extremely loyal to those who need his help. The first to go during Tug of War is Edna Krabappel. Edna fails because she only has average strength, which isn't a knock against her by itself, but she also doesn't seem very keen to work on a team, at least for the most part. You combine these two things and we sadly have to eliminate her during this game. Next to go during this game is none other than Mr. Burns. Burns fails this game very easily. Honestly, there is no one who fails this game harder than Montgomery Burns. Burns is not only exceedingly weak, as been shown hundreds of times throughout this show, but he has also starkly refused to work in a team 99% of the time if it's not the Springfield Republican Party. While very smart, Lindsay Nagel is the next one to fall during this game. Lindsay is a part of Springfield's Mensa and is exceedingly smart and she is also a skilled marksman. However, she has only average strength and doesn't seem very likely to work on a team. That of course causes her to fail due to the rules we've set in place, causing Nagel's elimination. For similar reasons, Artie Ziff is the next to die. Artie, much like Lindsay, is exceedingly smart and is one of the smartest characters in this show. However, he is relatively weak. It hasn't been played up like Burns, but he's still shown to be pretty weak. He also is not very willing to work in a team as he seems to love backstabbing people as he did with Homer. Tape his mouth so he can't deny it! You combine these factors and it's no surprise he fails this game handedly. Finally, we sadly have to eliminate Sideshow Bob next. Bob is a criminal mastermind and a highly intelligent person in general. Bob is even shown to have average strength, maybe slightly lower, but it's hard to say. However, he is unlikely to work in a team such as when he had to be forced into working with Homer to find out who was trying to kill him. So sadly, his lack of teamwork skills causes him to fall pretty heavily in a game like this. With only 14 of our original 30 casts still intact, we move on to the infamous Marbles game. To survive and win the Marble game, you need to be skilled in manipulation or be able to withstand the manipulation from others. If you can't do one of those, you're liable to lose. If you can't do both, you're undoubtedly dying. Masters of manipulation who are likely to survive this game include Fat Tony, who is one of the most manipulative villains in this series due to his position. Russ Cargill is more than able to manipulate the President of the United States. And Hank Scorpio, whose charisma is some of the highest in the series and he would no doubt survive this game. The first to go during this game is Lisa Simpson for a few reasons. Lisa is really smart, there's no doubt about that, however, she is still a child. Due to being a child, she is quite easily manipulated, especially by authority figures. She's also not very skilled in manipulation, which stops her from being able to survive a game like this. The next to fall during this game is Ned Flanders. Ned is a smart guy at times, but multiple episodes, especially in the Treehouse of Horror show that he can be easily manipulated even by people like Homer and Bart. Also, due to his personality, it's shown that he's not much of a manipulator, causing his death in this game. One of Mr. Burns' favorite plant workers, Carl Carlson, is next to go. Carl doesn't do a lot in this show as it stands and manipulation is definitely not one of them. 
Being able to manipulate people is very important, but he also seems easy to manipulate at times. Combining these factors is what causes him to die in this game, even if it's sad to see him go. Another well-known and recognizable character to die here is Waylon Smithers. Smithers falls during this game for the fact that he's not great at manipulating others, but that's not all. Smithers is very easily manipulated not only by Mr. Burns, but by others, which makes him a shoo in for dying in this game. Sadly, we have to see Barney Gumbel fall next. Barney falls this low because even while sober, he's relatively easy to manipulate. He's also not that great of a manipulator, which definitely causes him to fall behind. But if he had access to alcohol, he would be even easier to manipulate. So as it stands, he definitely loses this game. The hardworking Frank Grimes is the final character to die during the Marvels game. Frank has one of the saddest stories in all of The Simpsons from his childhood to his time at the plant. Frank sadly fails here because of his severe lack of manipulation skills. Despite his rough childhood, he lacks any sort of skills in manipulation because they weren't necessary for him. With the Marvel games wiping out a large group of people, we are now down to only 8 of our original 30 as we head into the Glass Stepping Stones. The Glass Stepping Stones, or the Glass Bridge, is one of the hardest games to determine. This is due to its high dependency on good luck and a skill not very many people have. However, we've determined the easiest way to figure it out is by combing over one's ego. Those with a higher ego are more likely to pick a lower number in order to go first before they know what the game is and therefore fall through the glass. The first to fall through the glass is Herb Powell. Herb is Homer's older half-brother, voiced by Danny DeVito. Well, because he's a rich inventor and had a pretty hefty team of people that loved him, he had a bit of a big head and is likely to pick one of the higher numbers, maybe a middle number, which would cause his failure. The next to go through the glass is Professor Frank. Frank is another character with a relatively large ego compared to the others in the series. It's not as large as certain characters, but if you look at certain moments, it's obvious. His intense intelligence is what makes him egotistical, such as hiding the truth of the hamburger earmuffs or taking over Springfield with Mensa. So his ego causes him to pick a lower number to go first. Everyone's favorite mob boss, Fat Tony, is the next to fail. Tony is intensely smart, intimidating, and manipulative, but his years as a mob boss have made him egotistical. Fat Tony would likely choose to go first or as soon as possible. The biggest ego in the room goes to Ross Cargill. Cargill is the main villain of the Simpsons movie and has the ego the size of a house. And he'd likely choose to go as soon as possible as well. Sadly, we have to eliminate one of our favorite characters, Hank Scorpio. Scorpio is a supervillain who is highly intelligent and manipulative and seems to be good spirited even when Homer has to leave. Hank does, however, have quite the ego. He doesn't hide his identity even when threatening the United Nations. He is a clever guy and might even try to force others to go ahead of him to increase his chances of survival. However, much like Gyaksu who tried this plan, he wouldn't likely survive much further than that. The final character to fail and fall through the glass is Snake Jailbird. Snake is a criminal and quite intelligent. He's even sometimes a pretty chill dude. However, Snake falls because he would likely pick a middle or maybe even a frontrunner number. And he's also likely to try and force others to go before him when it's his turn, and it wouldn't be a shock to anyone to see him go out like Gyaksu. We are now down to the final two contestants as we move into the titular Squid Game. This squid game requires one skill, and that is hand-to-hand -hand combat prowess because that's what the game comes down to in the end. Yes, the Midnight Brawl also tested this, but this comes down to a one-on-one -on -one duel, which is quite different. The final two survivors are Manic Matriarch Marge Simpson and Antagonistic Administrator Seymour Skinner. Both Marge and Skinner are intelligent, altruistic, and quite intimidating at times. Both of them are also skilled fighters in their own rights, but we've decided that Seymour Skinner is the last to fall. While Skinner is military trained, we never get to see him in hand-to-hand -hand combat to our knowledge. However, the episode The Great Wife Hope shows Marge becoming a skilled mixed martial artist after training under Dredrick Tatum, one of the best fighters in the series. 
This was definitely one of the harder ones to decide on, and Marge Simpson winning was not our first guess, but it's what we eventually decided on. But let us know in the comment section if you agree with our ranking, and tell us what we should cover next. Remember to hit that notification bell and binge more of our videos. But most importantly, stay wicked.